My name is Ben, I'm part of the support team here at Interface, and this is a quick video uh, to demonstrate and show the new smart uh, processors in Bitrix24. Uh, smart processors are a, effectively a customizable CRM entity uh, within the Bitrix24 uh, CRM that allows users to create their own entity uh, and processes. Um, within those processes um, or the entity, you can create your own pipelines stages, automation rules, and permissions uh, for each one of these uh, uh, entities. And these entities can then be further connected to um, other CRM entities and modules like um, the deals, leads, contacts, uh, and as well as uh, you can also connect to them to uh, the calendar events and tasks. And I'll uh, quickly demonstrate how this works. So to get it to get the actual uh, smart processes, you want to go to your site and navigate to the CRM. In the CRM, you will find a button for um, smart uh, process automation. Um, if it doesn't show in the menu at the top, it might show under more. If you click into there, um, you'll be presented with this interface, effectively just a list. Uh, it'll be blank for yourself if you've not created any. Uh, and if you were to click add, that will allow you to create a new smart process. Uh, so I'll do that just to show you what this uh, looks like. Uh, so when doing that, you will see a slider with some options. Uh, and in essence, uh, this allows you to uh, kind of pre-configure or select a pre-configured uh, set of uh, rules for these smart processes. So in my case, I'm going to go with an empty SPA so we can configure it from scratch. Uh, and we're going to do the first thing is we're going to give it a name and we're going to go call it an onboarding onboarding sorry onboarding um, so that'll be our name and you can see here at the bottom we have some some options and this is entirely depending on, on your structure and what exactly you want to achieve uh, so at the top one um, using custom pipelines and uh, sales funnels in the SPA. Uh, I'm going to select that. Uh, what this allows me to do is very similar to deals. I can use uh, pipelines and additional stages uh, within that, uh, sorry, additional funnels uh, within that uh, those pipelines. Um, so in effect, I can then have different um, uh, processes or different stages for each different types of processes uh, that I need to trigger. Um, in uh, another case is uh, using custom stages and in, uh, and the Kanban view in the SBA. So if you are uh, if you have multiple stages uh, for the um, for the process, uh, for example, uh, in our case we're going to be doing a, a an onboarding uh, process. So in my case, I've got four stages for that. But there might be situations where you don't need stages. Uh, and you just need uh, kind of a documentation of what it is. So you can deselect that uh, in that case. Uh, using automation rules and triggers, pretty self-explanatory. If you wanna be able to automate and use triggers within this entity, you have to select this option. And then this final option, uh, in effect, just means that if you create additional pipelines on top of the ones that we pre create now, um, these uh, pipelines uh, are automatically um, made public so any any new pipelines can then um, be automatically be granted access to uh, to uh, all your users so I'm going to select all four again this is entirely dependent on what uh, it is that you're trying to achieve so I would encourage you to mess around with these the next option is the SBA fields um, so this effectively uh, uh, allows you to pre-configure what uh, some of the um, the fields that uh, are available in this entity card. Uh, you might recognize some of these fields from uh, the CRM within deals, contacts, or, or, or leads. And the main, uh, the main ones obviously that you can see is the company details. So this is if you wanted to, of course, uh, include the, um, the details f uh, field. So you can store uh, additional uh, like information like the address, uh, uh, banking details, etc., uh, all within this uh, little field. We've got the source, uh, so we can track uh, where 
this entity came from. So, you know, there might be situations where we, we might um, include it for email. And then we've got the customer uh, a field. Now this one's quite important if you want to um, bind uh, the, the entity we're creating to either a company or to a contact. We've got the start date and end date. Again, self-explanatory. And then we've got the observe, observers in case we wanted to uh, give anybody access uh, to this record without making them pre um, responsible for, for that record. And uh, there's some additional um, uh, options over here. Things like being able to print documents, uh, binding catalog uh, products. So if you wanted to bring in products into this entity and final, finally, the use of the recycle bin. Uh, so obviously if you wanted to recover any of these records, you could do that. Uh, the next option on the list is the CRM binding. And this is what you would actually use to bind uh, our automation, uh, our process uh, or entity to certain entities uh, within the uh, CRM. So as you can see here, um, I can select any one of the lead, deal, or order, which are the default uh, CRM entities. And then in addition to that, I can select any additional entities that I may have created using this process. So in, in, in my situation with the onboard boarding process, I do wanna collect and link a deal and we want to select it in the deal form. Uh, that way, if if a, a customer, a new customer, or a new lead orders uh, places an order with us, uh, I can then send them uh, start the onboarding process as part of the sales process, uh, or or really uh, an a, an additional entity or process for it. Uh, you can also select additional uh, entities. So in case you obviously didn't want to select them uh, from here. You can select it over here. Uh, so these are ones, these are entities that I've already uh, created previously. Um, so after saving this onboarding one, if I was to create another one, I would be able to create and select um, this onboarding one. But I, and you can additionally create links to the uh, details form. But I'm not going to do this in this case. I only want to bind to this SBA. Uh, yeah. So binding to other tools, uh, once again, we can select the CRM entities, uh, we can select um, calendar, tasks and task template. Uh, so again, if you needed to uh, select any other CRM entities, you'll have a field. Um, if you wanted to create any events and link them to this uh, entity, you'd have to do that. And, and it's the same for tasks and task templates. Final option in this uh, menu is the add to menu uh, uh, um, option or parameter. Uh, in effect, uh, this allows you to create a, a link to this SBA in the left hand menu uh, in your, your main uh, menu. So you can select and you can add additional items. In this case, I just, I, I'm not gonna leave that, I'm gonna leave that disabled and I'm gonna click save. Uh, so now we've actually got our, uh, as you can see, our SBA uh, um, created. Um, we can actually manage the field settings. So the additional fields or custom fields that we can create for this uh, directly in this interface. So once again, CRM, Smart Process Automation. And then you can hover over the one you've just created and click Field Settings. This will bring up a, a list, a slider with a list. Uh, with any custom uh, uh, um, fields you already have. If not, you can click on the Create button. Over here, just like any other uh, um, field, you can uh, configure the data type, selecting from a pre-configured list. Um, the field ID is, is locked, so you won't be able to change that, but you can change the field name and configure some of these uh, settings, like multiple values, uh, whether the, the value is required, etc., etc. Uh, you can also uh, give um, the field additional names in different uh, languages. So you can obviously, uh, you know, for localization purposes, really, 
And then under more, uh, we can set certain values for the default value, row count, anything like that. So in my case, you might in your in any situation, um, I know I've got a uh, uh, an onboarding process. I might want to attach some files to that, uh, so I can do multiple uh, onboarding files. So we'll give that a name. Make it uh, well. We won't make it required yet. We'll leave that everything the same, and we'll click save, uh, and then will have an actual field. To actually edit the uh, or view um, the actual process, we can click on the name over here, uh, or alternatively, uh, once you create it, you, you'll be able to get it obviously in the menu as well. So I'm gonna click on here, um, and as you can see, this is very much like a, the lead view or a deal view where you can see the different stages. Um, similarly to deals, I can actually edit the pipeline directly by clicking pipelines and edit editing the stages here. And I can add an extra funnel if I wanted to. Uh, and in effect, I can uh, configure some automation rules based on that um, to move my uh, entity back and forth uh, between these so in my case I only actually want the one uh, pipeline and uh, so I'm going to do this configure my stages so we've got my introduction the second one I want to do is prepare um, material And then final one will be send, send package. Uh, and then under success is obviously when they reply and they're happy with the information and fail uh, obviously is also a default. We'll rename this and just call it uh, onboarding process. Uh, and then over here at the top, we can click uh, add to actually add uh, one of our, um, yeah, an, an all body process. So as you can see here, uh, we've got the amount, um, you know, which by default, uh, uh, you know, you could, you, could, you could hide if you don't need this. We'll give it a name and uh, we'll just go, um, And then under select field, I'm gonna make sure that I've got all the fields that I want in here. Uh, actually, I don't wanna hide that one, hide that one. So we can configure any stages that we want, obviously create any additional fields, um, anything like that. And, and over here in my contact, I'm gonna select uh, one of my contacts. And for the deal, I'm just going to select a potential deal. Do a test deal. Uh, and I'm going to save this. So as you can see, um, I've got my, um, my new entity directly uh, showing directly underneath the introduction. Uh, I can also set some automation rules. Uh, so based on uh, the different stages it's in, I can have certain automation rules go out. So in my case, I might want to send an introduction email uh, just as um, just as a like an initial uh, step. Um, and then obviously we can, what we can do is we can also create all sorts of uh, kind of activities or um, um, kind of
kind of a, a task even. We can create a task for the user, uh, just letting them know obviously of the different uh, 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 actions that they need to do throughout the, uh, uh, the process. So you can flesh that out and build that up the way you want it to. Uh, so obviously have each of the automation rules uh, uh, for that. But in addition to that, you can also have triggers. Uh, so, uh, you know, in situations where you've got an email being sent out and the email's being clicked or being viewed, you can pr automatically progress uh, uh, um, the the deal, oh sorry, the uh, the entity we've created uh, to the stage depending on that, that uh, trigger. So I'm just gonna save my automation rules. Um, so in terms of the connection to other entities, now that I've actually created uh, this, um, this record, uh, you can see I've connected it to my contact, I've connected it to a deal, and I've also got some details from my company. So if I was to click on, um, I was to click on my deal, you'll see a tab here called onboarding. If I click on the tab, I'll be able to see kind of a link to the record I've just created. Uh, and I'll be able to see, uh, obviously, it's different, different uh, kind of information about the, uh, the actual um, uh, record. So you can keep track uh, of, of the progress of this entity uh, directly within the CRM from, from different entities. Uh, this is the same with the contact as well, um, now that the contact's been uh, linked. So I can see the onboarding uh, for that. Um, so... Obviously, depending on your use case, uh, you'll be able to uh, uh, connect uh, the, this entity to any other entity uh, in the CRM uh, and be able to see um, that link. And that covers everything uh, with the, um, the automation processes, the smart automation processes. Thank you very much for your time, and I hope you find this very helpful. Take care.